This is a logo that you've probably seen before. But this is that same logo completely transformed with one click from a brand new AI model. And hell yes, we're gonna leverage it to make some money. This strategy is so new that hardly anyone is talking about it. There are only a few videos I could find on YouTube on the topic, so the competition is light for now. We're gonna start a new side hustle selling logo transformations, making AI do all the work. And using the same AI model, we're also gonna sell custom QR codes scannable with any URL. Now, there are regular people making a fortune right now selling these on Etsy. Let's see if we can corner the market with a superior product. Today, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to create mind-blowing art with the click of a button, how to fully package them as a service to sell on Etsy and Fiverr, and I'll show you how I got several thousand views on my shop within the first month, along with a bunch of sales. Let's get into it. Real quick before we begin, if you wanna learn how I edit my videos, join my free newsletter in the description. I'm giving out tons of sauce in the next email. You won't wanna miss it. All right, let's get back to it. So for these projects, we're gonna be using Stable Diffusion, an AI art generator like Midjourney, but unlike Midjourney, it's free. And more importantly, it's highly customizable with a feature that allows you to upload your own reference image that it'll use as a base to paint around. Now, this is crazy because it means that you can offer clients a highly unique spin on one of their own existing products, like for example, their logo. So let's start there. Now, there are quite a few steps to get started, but you only have to do this once. This small barrier to entry is where the opportunity lies though. This is your opportunity to get ahead of the herd. To install Stable Diffusion on your computer, we're gonna use a program called Stability Matrix, which basically makes this whole thing a one-click process. Go ahead and download it from the link in the description. It'll detect your GPU, then click continue. Now you need to save it to a location on your hard drive. If you wanna follow along with me, create a brand new folder called A1111, which is the model of Stable Diffusion we are downloading. Now when this page pops up, leave it on the default setting, Automatic 1111. And when it's done, you'll be greeted with this page. Click launch in the upper left-hand corner, and again, it's gonna go ahead and install a few more things. It only goes through this process the first time you install it. When it is finished installing, a new browser window will pop up with the interface on it. Awesome, done with step one. Let's start by looking up here at the drop-down window called Stable Diffusion Checkpoint, also referred to as models. Think of them as the genre you want your images to look like. Well, this is a visual representation of some of the models that you can download for free. And you'll notice each image varies in art style. This one here called Epic Realism will produce images from your prompt that look hyper-realistic as if they were taken from a real camera. This one on the other hand, Rev Animated, will produce images in the style of anime. So using the same exact text prompt, you will get drastically different images depending on which checkpoint you're using. For example, this is Stable Diffusion's output for the prompt Woman in Forest using the Rev Animated Anime Checkpoint. Now, if I switch over to the Epic Realism checkpoint, that same exact text prompt would look like this. Pretty awesome. Now for our logo designs, I wanna replicate realism. So we're gonna download the Epic Realism model and you wanna save this file to a specific folder, A1111, Models, then Stable Diffusion. Now, if you go back into the program and click the little refresh icon, you'll see our new checkpoint, Epic Realism. Next, we need to download the accessory to Stable Diffusion that will allow us to give it a reference photo to paint around. This is called a control net. Click the link in the description for the control net, then scroll down to the installation section. Copy this URL and head back to the program. At the top of the interface, select the extensions tab. Select install from URL and paste the URL that you copied into this first box. Click install and then click on the tab called installed. Then click Apply and Restart UI. <laughs> I swear, you only have to do this once. Once Stable Diffusion restarts, you'll notice that you have a new section in the interface called Control Net. Here is where we give Stable Diffusion our own reference photo. Almost done. Last step, go back to the Control Net page, scroll down a little until you see the Download Models tab. Click the link and download the control model called lineart.pth into the file path A1111 Models Control Net. Hit the refresh button and you should see your linear control model. All right, finally, we're set up. Let's use Toyota's logo for this example and crank out a bunch of sick art. 
So go grab a logo of your choice and make sure that it's black and white. If your logo isn't black and white, desaturate it in Photoshop or a free version of Photoshop called PhotoP, which we're actually gonna use right now regardless. Stable Diffusion likes work in square formats, so we need to resize our logo. Make a new canvas with the dimensions 512 by 512, then resize your logo. Export that as a PNG and go back into Stable Diffusion. Drag your logo into the control net. All right, now we're ready to give our text prompt to Stable Diffusion. First, I'm gonna write bird's eye view to tell it what angle I want my image from. And then I'll write a few descriptive words of what I'm looking for. Let's go with a glacier ice setting for this first one. Now the box below here is a space for negative prompts or things that you don't want the program to produce. Because I'm going for a realistic feel, I'll have it not include things like cartoons, illustrations, etc. Moving down to sampling method, Choose DPM++ SDE Keras, and you can leave the rest as it is. Scroll down to control net settings. Hit enable, then hit low VRAM if you have a mediocre graphics card. I'm gonna leave it unchecked because I have a powerful one. Pixel perfect, control type, select linear. For preprocessor, select invert, this is important. And then just make sure your model here is set to linear. Next, we go to control weight. I like to start at 1.25. Resize and fill, and then let's generate. And boom, we've got our first logo. I think this one looks sick. Just a quick tip here, if you want variations in your art, you can try messing around with the CFG value. For this picture, I use the default setting of seven, which I typically find is best. Now increasing this value will introduce more creativity into your final image, but if you go too high, you'll notice that Stable Diffusion starts going a little overboard and you lose the logo within the art. On the other hand, if you go too low, you will retain more of the reference image, but overall the image looks a little bit less cool and creative. I typically like to stay between seven and 12. All right, let's try one more here and let's try an urban setting. Sick, I love this one too. And once you're done generating some images, you can click on this little folder icon, which will open up the location where your generated images are stored. All right, this next part is optional, but if the images aren't sharp enough for your liking, you can use a free AI upscaler like Upscale to increase the resolution. Now take a look at the trees in here in the side-by-side -side comparison. You can see the upscaled image on the right has so much more detail than the original. And keep an eye on everything as I slide the comparison bar over. I think that's much better. Once you've got some images that you're happy with, you can easily make a loopable GIF like this to better market your product. Here in Premiere, we're gonna right click in our bin and select import, navigate to the folder where your images are, rename them in numerical order so that Premiere can import them as a chronological image sequence by selecting this box down at the bottom of the screen. Now you'll see that our image sequence is in Premiere, but it's a little too quick. So we'll right click it, select the time section and slow down this entire sequence by dragging the bar down. All right, that's better, but I'm gonna duplicate this a couple of times and then add in the film grain and film burns that I gave away in my newsletter for extra effect. If you wanna learn how to edit like the pros and get insane views on your videos, sign up in the description. It's free and the next letter is gonna be nuts. All right, looking good here. I'm just gonna keyframe a scale parameter so that we have a slow push in. Cool, this looks awesome. Now we're gonna head over to Canva to create the rest of our marketing for our Etsy listing. Now this video isn't sponsored by Canva, but I really do think it's an awesome product. There are so many pre-made templates that you can choose from. You can just delete the assets you don't want, customize your text, and you've got professional looking marketing material. Cool, let's upload these to the Etsy listing and then upload the GIF video if you made one. Now the reason why I love making these little videos is that when someone sees your listing in Etsy and they scroll over it, the looped video will automatically play. Etsy can be tough to stand out on, so you need every edge you can get. All right, it took a little bit of elbow grease, but our listing is up and running. Let's create one more product using the control net, and then we'll ramp up the marketing and start generating some sales. A quick tour of Etsy shows that custom QR codes are highly in demand. This guy already has thousands of sales. I think we can one-up the quality of these QR codes though by using a normal QR code as a reference photo, then have Stable Diffusion paint around it, giving us some insanely creative, fully scannable codes. First thing we need to do is install a different checkpoint for the control net called QR code monster. Download both the safe tensor file and the YAML file. Save it to the same path you saved the linear checkpoint to. Next, we'll download another stable diffusion checkpoint called realistic vision. Next, we're gonna generate the raw QR code. 
head over to qr.io and input your URL. For my code, I'm gonna use the link to my Etsy shop. Save that and go back to Save the Fusion. For checkpoint, select Realistic Vision. Sampling method is gonna be the default, DPM++ 2M Keras. Leave the rest. Down in Control Net, drag your QR code in. Enable. Select QR code monster for the model and set the preprocessor to invert. Control weight. I like to start at 1.25 and end in control step around 0.75. All right, for our first prompt, I'm gonna copy and paste this one that I got from AI Voice Tutor. He did an amazing job working on these. Let's start off with a realistic lasagna. And man, I think these are so cool. It's awesome that they're fully scannable too. Now, this one should scan for you perfectly. That said, if they are having trouble scanning, the parameter you want to adjust is control weight. If you increase this value, more of your original QR code will appear in the generated image, increasing the success rate of your phone scans. Comes at a cost though, because you can see that in the process of making it more scannable, we actually lost some of the creativity of the art. The one on the left with the lower control step looks much more like realistic lasagna. However, the chances of a successful scan is probably higher with the one on the right. Adjust this parameter to meet your needs on a case by case basis, but just remember these principles. Increasing the value will show more code and decreasing the value will introduce more creative art. Here are a few more examples of some other awesome QR codes I generated. Again, if you want the prompts, I'll include a list in the description. And here are a few from a different checkpoint, the Rev animated one, which I also think are really cool. Gonna head back into Canva now and start putting together my listing assets. And this is totally optional, but I did decide to print some of the designs out as stickers for some exposure in my local area, with permission, of course. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do is activate Etsy ads for both of my listings. Now, I think this is totally worth it. Etsy will push your listings out aggressively. These ads were directly responsible for over 1,700 views, 33 clicks, and even an order. Now, every time someone purchased an item, I messaged the buyer offering them an extra piece of art for a review on my public page. Only a couple people took me up on it, but in general, it's a fantastic way to drive more engagement to your store. In the first month, I've managed to get eight sales for a total of around $250, which is actually a pretty insane start considering it's only been a few weeks. As my marketing efforts keep feeding my page and boosting my store's SEO, I'm expecting to see this ramp up significantly. All right, so was this the easiest, most passive thing to start up? No, not exactly, but in my opinion, even though the advent of AI has been an incredible asset to many people, it's also instilled a false reliance on technology as an automatic, effortless money printer. You still need to put in the upfront work. Next to a winning lottery ticket, there really are no shortcuts. Find your edge, get out there, stir the pot, create your own luck, and be better than you were yesterday. Go get them, and I'll see you in the next one.